State Department spokesperson Ned Price held a press briefing on Monday where he was asked about the Iran nuclear deal. The deal was signed in July 2015 by Barack Obama, his counterpart in Iran, and other world powers. Donald Trump unilaterally pulled the U.S. out of the deal in May 2018, but President Biden is now trying to revive it. Iran's foreign ministry spokesman reportedly said that the U.S. is procrastinating in its response. Price pushed back on that idea, saying, quote, The notion that we have delayed this negotiation in any way is just not true. Because, you know, we've been expecting now you guys to uh, deliver your response to the EU, to the Iranians' response to the EU. Um, has it been delivered yet? Uh, if not, why not? Are you waiting there? The Israeli National Security Advisor is supposed to be in town this week. Are you waiting for that meeting before delivering the response to the EU? Sure. Uh, so to take a step back uh, and to remind of something we've said since the earliest days of this, we have taken a deliberate, uh, we have taken a principled approach to these negotiations from the start. We have said uh, since we first started down this road in the spring of last year that if Iran is prepared uh, to fully implement its commitments under the 2015 deal, then uh, we are prepared to do the same. Uh, that, of course, uh, remains as true today as it was last year. Uh, this negotiation, it is true, and, and you all in this room know this, uh, has at times languished, uh, and it has languished at times for months and months uh, because of the action, or uh, oftentimes was the case, inaction uh, from Iran. Uh, the notion that we have delayed this negotiation in any way uh, is just not true. Uh, we stated in March when there, after, the, after months of pain, painstaking diplomacy and dialogue, uh, we arrived at uh, the text, essentially, of a deal that we were prepared for a mutual return to full implementation of the JCPOA uh, based on that text that was uh, on the table at the time. It was Iran, of course, uh, that was not prepared to say the same. <clears throat> Uh, the EU, as you know, did table a text more recently. Uh, that is the text that has been the topic of some discussion uh, between the various parties over the past couple uh, of weeks. Uh, the EU uh, based this text on the March text that we were prepared uh, to accept. Uh, the high representative, Mr. Burrell, has described this uh, as the final text. Iran, in turn, responded with several comments. Uh, this is why it has taken us uh, some additional time to review those comments uh, and to uh, determine a response of our own. We are seriously reviewing those comments. Uh, at the same time, we are engaging uh, with our partners, with the EU, uh, with our European allies on the way ahead. These consultations have taken place uh, at various levels. Rob Malley, of course, is deeply engaged in this, but uh, even at the senior-most levels. You saw yesterday the White House issued a readout of the president's uh, call with his E3 counterparts where uh, Iran was discussed. Uh, we are encouraged by the fact that Iran appears to have dropped some of its non-starter demands, uh, such as lifting the FTO designation of the IRGC. Uh, but as you've heard from us over the past couple of days, uh, there are still uh, some outstanding issues that must be resolved, some gaps uh, that must be bridged if we are able to uh, get there. We will uh, respond to Iran's uh, response uh, as soon as our internal consultations are completed and as soon as our consultations uh, with our close partners okay. are concluded well, as well. That was kind of a defensive answer, at least in the beginning, because I didn't ask, I didn't suggest, I don't think, that you have delayed this negotiation. And you just seem to come out and uh, you know, reject that without, without that kind of allegation to be made. I, I realize that some may have said that. As a part of the question, I'm just wondering when you're going to respond. So we, we will we will respond as soon as uh, we have a response prepared, as soon as those consultations well, that we're undertaking internally, uh, as well as our close partners, as soon as those are completed. Okay. Well, does that mean that then that, that, that you're going to talk to the Israelis first before? We've we've been uh, discussing this with our Israeli partners since day one, uh, since going back. 
uh, to the start of this process in Vienna in the spring of last year, and really uh, before that. Uh, at every step of the process, uh, we have been in touch with our Israeli partners to update them uh, on where we are, to compare notes on the state of Iran's nuclear program. Of course, Israel, uh, just as we do, has deep concerns about the state of Iran's nuclear program. For our part, we continue to believe that a mutual return to compliance with the JCPOA is the most effective means by which to address uh, those concerns, but we'll continue to okay. discuss this with uh, our Israeli partners. I, I get that. In this, at this moment in time, Monday, the, whatever, the 22nd, are you, are you waiting for, to, to speak to the Israeli National Security Advisor before you respond to the EU? We are taking, we are undertaking a number of consultations, some of them internal, some of them external, some of them we've spoken to, some of them we have not spoken to, but I'm just not in a position to detail all of them. To follow up, Nadia? Yeah, just to follow up on what Matt just mentioned. Uh, Mr. Bora said that he hopes to hear your response by the end of this week. Is this a reasonable timetable considering what you just said about March that has been alteration and changes and you need your time before you can respond? Is end of this week, are we talking about like days or are we talking about weeks before we hear your response? We are working as quickly as we can uh, to put together an appropriate response uh, to uh, the uh, Iranian uh, paper. Uh, this is a process that we want to make sure uh, that we undertake uh, with the rigor and with the attention to detail that is necessary for an issue that is, is as important uh, as this one is. Uh, I can guarantee you that uh, we will not take one day longer than is necessary to provide our response to the EU. As I've said before, we have been prepared uh, going back to last spring uh, to return to compliance with the JCPOA on a mutual basis. Uh, there has been a text, there had been a text on the table that we were prepared to accept uh, this past March, March of 2022. It was Iran uh, that was not in the position to say the same. So we are working as quickly as we can, as methodically uh, as we can, and as carefully as we can uh, to see to it that our response uh, is complete. It takes into account uh, the Iranian feedback, and we'll provide that uh, to the EU just as soon as we're able. Why do you consult with the Israelis regularly as part of this uh, ongoing strategic dialogue? Um, can you just tell us that if this visit specifically, and when is going to happen between the National Security Advisor, Israeli, and uh, the Secretary? Uh, because I, my understanding was supposed to be today, and he's meeting with Jake Sullivan tomorrow, but I haven't seen anything on the schedule. Can you confirm when he is meeting with him? And is it significant that basically, as what Matt was alluded, is it basically part of the response? You waiting for him? Is it part of the general pictures of, of the briefing the Israelis or specifically go coordinate a response to the Iranian proposal? I don't expect we'll be in a position to arrange a meeting between the National Security Advisor and the Secretary, but uh, there will be high level consultations between the Israeli National Security Advisor and individuals in this building, uh, in addition to the other interlocutors uh, that Mr. Halada will be meeting with this week. Uh, in Washington. Uh, as you know, our relationship is uh, deep uh, with Israel. There are also a, a, a number of issues uh, that we have to discuss together, including uh, Israel's security, our uh, support uh, for it, regional security. But as part of regional security, uh, of course, Iran looms large uh, in just about every one of our in-depth engagements with uh, our Israeli partners, Iran, uh, is a topic of conversation. Oftentimes, it is a central topic of conversation, uh, and I expect that will be the case uh, with the uh, discussions this week. Matt, so, Matt, uh, would you say the two remaining obstacles, if there are two, the two remaining obstacles, that one is the Iran's insistence or the, the Iran's request or demand that uh, uh, IEA the inspection uh, stop or you know, reduce or whatever, and the second one is that you are really having difficulty with the members of your own party in, in the Senate. I mean, that, 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 that is not, are, you, are you convinced that you can convince members of the Senate that matter, and I asked you about this last week, to go along with whatever new move here? Saeed, we are looking at this uh, at Iran's nuclear program as a national security challenge. Uh, we are uh, consulting internally with our partners as well. Uh, through the lens of foreign policy and national security. Uh, any political considerations are not factoring in uh, to the response that we provide back 
uh, to the EU. We will continue to make the case, including uh, to Americans here at home, as well as to lawmakers, uh, of the utility of a mutual return to compliance with the JCPOA, especially in relation to where we are now uh, with Iran's nuclear program, a nuclear program that was in a position, has been in a position to gallop forward uh, in ways that are of deep concern to us, to our Israeli partners, to our European allies, uh, to partners around the world uh, since the last administration left uh, the JCPOA. So we'll continue uh, to have those discussions with lawmakers, but we're approaching this uh, as the national security challenge this is. Uh, I'm not in a position, uh, of course, to detail the negotiations that are taking place uh, by and uh, through the EU high representative, uh, but we have been clear on a couple of issues. Uh, on the questions of safeguards, uh, this is a question that goes really to the core of the mandates of the IAEA. Uh, safeguard investigations are not political. They are not leverage or bargaining chips. No one should try to treat them as such. Uh, once the IAEA director general reports uh, to the Board of Governors that outstanding issues have been clarified and resolved, uh, we expect Iran would come off the board's agenda. Uh, not before. There are no shortcuts to this. Our position always has been and will be uh, crystal uh, clear on this. And we have communicated it uh, both in public and uh, indirectly to the Iranians. Iran needs to answer the IAEA's questions. Uh, this is the only way to address these issues once and for all. Uh, our position is not going to change, regardless of where we express it uh, in the text of an understanding on mutual return to full implementation of the JCPOA, in public, uh, or elsewhere. Uh, we are unbending in our support of the IAEA, in support of the IAEA's mandates, uh, and the independence of the IAEA that is core uh, to that mandate. Uh, we are in the midst of the ongoing uh, NPT REVCON, the Nonproliferation uh, Treaty Review Conference. Uh, no one should require any reminders about the indispensable role uh, of the IAEA uh, amidst uh, the many nonproliferation challenges we face today.